So I bought, I sold as seen Commodore 64 from eBay. Am I stupid? Everybody says no. Well, not everybody says no. A lot of people said no, I'm not. But um, I'm not sure. Might be a bit stupid for doing this. So it's just the Commodore 64 and the box and that's it. There's no power supply, nothing. Uh, seller didn't even say they powered it on. I don't even know if it's gonna have like the board in it or the chips. Is it gonna be broken? I've got no clue. But it was quite cheap for what it is, if it's worked well, if it's got some of the main chips in. 70 pounds. 70 English pounds. Oh, let's turn it over. So the box is really scuffed up. It looks like it's been absolutely through the wars. High resolution sound synthesizer. Hey. The original polystyrene. It's too big to get on the camera. There's the giant Commodore logo, bossed in the uh, polystyrene. Oh, there it is, it's backwards. It's backwards. Oh. They've even included, so it's the Commodore 64, the box, and this RF cable, which nobody wants. So nobody needs that. Right, here we go. It, it just said from a smoke-free home, and that was about it. And sold a scene, you can't send it back. That doesn't look too bad, let's have a look. Uh, one of the things I could see on the auction pictures is that the case did look like it was in really nice condition. And this one does look quite good. And the keys look like the white on the keys has gone incredibly yellow. But other than that, looks like it's in really good condition. This could even be the best. Oh, I heard something inside then. Something's going on inside here. Um, this could even be the best Condor 64 bread bin case condition that I've got. A giant ball of fluff just fell out of it there. Maybe that's 40 year old fluff. Well, it's got the board in it. That's a start. I can hear something rattling around. So I'm going to take it, open it up and see what's in it. Because who knows? So I wonder, is it going to have, is it even going to have any of the chips or anything in it? Has it been pillaged? Um, will it, somebody have put a load of broken chips in it? Will it just be a fully working Commodore 64? Will it be full of pet hair? I don't know is the answer. I just don't know. Well, what has it got? Yeah, it's got an original PLA, original SID. I haven't, I'd have to open up that to see if the VIX in there or anything, but it looks completely untouched. It's just really dusty. It might be worth checking these voltage, well, this voltage, voltage regulator here before I power it up, just to make sure it's not gonna blow anything because we have an original SID. We've got the, both the original CIAs. It's never had a, a chip socketed, so, Chances are, I'm going to suggest that this probably doesn't work because that PLA, what's the chances of it actually lasting this long? But if this SID works and the VIC works, hey, that's a win. I can't believe that. That's actually in really good condition. It's got a mixture of RAM chips, but they look like they're factory, I think. Has it got a mixture? No, they're MT RAM chips. Oh, I don't know which one's which here. There's NEC stuff. There's a all a massive mixture of stuff going on down here. Um, but yeah, it's just a real big coating of dust. So all the chips are from, well, we've got 10th week 84 for the SID, but then we've got 52nd week 83, 83, 6th week 84. So, oh yeah, because that, that's 52nd week of 83, that's right at the end of 83, and that's right at the start of 84. So these could all be the original chips. So it, maybe it was put together in early 84. Oh, this, this air duster thing is useless. Absolutely useless. I don't see any signs of damage or anything. Or maybe I'll take, I'll, I'll at least take the SID out before we boot it up. Because if it has got a bad voltage regulator, then at least we won't blow the SID up. If we can get this thing out. There we go. 6581, 10th week 84. So a little bit of contact cleaner just in the power port. Just a little bit in the graphics port. If this turns on, I think this will be a small miracle. So what do you bet? It's a 40 year old computer, is this gonna work? It's got a red light. It's got a video signal. And it's a... 
That is a black screen. That is a total black screen. There is a video signal coming from that though. Let's try, well before I go anywhere, let me just measure that voltage regulator. Okay, so that's five volts. That's good. That is producing five volts. This one should be 12, yep. Okay, so we've got a good voltage regulator. That's good news. Let me just check that there's power getting to some of these chips. Pin six down here. I'll just check that the power's getting over here somewhere. Three, four, five, six. Yeah, there you go. So power's getting to the CPU. Let me just spray some contact cleaner into the cartridge port and then I'll, I'll try the dead test cartridge. So I think that's dead test and I think that's doing nothing. Let's try again. Here we go. No, dead test has got a black screen. So let's try the other test. I think it's turn it on and do two clicks on this back bit. Nope. So dead test can't come up with anything for it. The PLA is a huge suspect for this thing. It's just a massive suspect. But like I said, it's got it's getting video signal, so that is something. And it's getting power. But let me do a bit more investigation and let's see what else we can find that might be wrong on here. I'm just gonna have a look at the clock signal on the CPU. So here we go. And we've got a pretty good clock signal. We've got a CPU halt pin, I could look at that. That is high. So it looks like high is good on that. Is there anything else I can check on the CPU? I could just have a look at some of the address lines and make sure they're not utterly bonkers crazy. There you go, so stuff's going on on address line zero. What else have we got? Address line one. Whoa, let's not short it. Stuff happening there. Stuff happening on three, four. So something's going on. Let's look at some of the data lines on it. There we go, that's data line zero. So the CPU is doing stuff, although it might be quite hard to see on the camera, but it is doing stuff. Data line one, data line two, data line three. Stuff is happening. So it might be worth looking at, see if I can just look at some of the pins on the PLA and see if I can spot anything bad going on there. Because this PLA is a known problem and I'm suspecting it already because it will cause a black screen if it's broken. Pin. 28, which is voltage to the PLA. I'm expecting this about five volts. There it is, five volts for the PLA. Um, I did check the reset line as well. The reset line is good. So the voltages are good, the reset line is good. Pin two, three, and four are connected to the address bus. So let's just have a look at those, see if they're doing anything crazy. That's this one here. Oh, that's just high. So, Pin two is connected to A13 of the address bus and it's just constantly high. So that doesn't seem right. This is A14 of the address bus. That's constantly high. Pin 15 of the address bus. And that's high as well. So they're all just pulled high. That's not really doing anything. Are we getting, I'm gonna just check all these pins and see if any of them are doing anything. That's high. Pin six is high, pin seven is high, pin eight is high. Oh, pin nine, what's that? Connected to CAS on the VIC-2. That is strobing. That seems probably the right thing to do. That is ROM high, that's just high. ROM low, that's high. Pin 12 just says IO, I don't know what that is. That's high. Color RAM, that's high. This, part, this PLA doesn't seem great, and it's actually super hot as well. I'm just touching it now. It's pretty hot. This PLA stinks. Pin 27 is address bus, that's high. Pin 25 um, is connected to VIC-2, that's high. Oh, something's working there. What's that? Pin 24. 
24, is that right? Oh no, pin 25 connected to inverted version of AC on the VIC-2. Don't know what that is, but that's strobing. It's doing something. Pin 24, read right of the bus. It's high. <laughs> this is really bad. Next pin is high. Next pin is high. Oh, we've got something on that one. It's pin 21. VA13 on the VIC-2. So is this, are these input ones are working? That's coming from the VIC-2 as well. But that one is low. That is chip enable, is it? Oh, if that's chip enable, that's not working. Two, three, four, five. Yeah, that is chip enable. It's completely low all the time. So the PLA is not even chip enabled. Is that an input or an output? That's got to be an input, hasn't it? Well, this all seems really bad. It doesn't appear to be doing anything. Just everything's high that's coming out of it. And also the fact that it's it's now red hot. It's suggesting to me that we have a bad PLA, which is kind of a suspect to start with, because we're not going to get anywhere until that PLA is good. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take that PLA out using the desoldering station and some hot air and stuff. I've done that before in a previous video. And I'm going to stick this socket in because uh, I highly suspect that this PLA is dead. I mean, let's face it, they're pretty much all dead by now, aren't they? This is 40 years old and these were failing after six months or even less. So these are a huge problem. So I'm going to socket that. This is one of these GAL PLAs. I've just tested this and this does work in another Commodore 64. So I am gonna pop this in here and hopefully it'll fit next to this diode. Yep, there we go. Oh, that went in quite easy. Maybe too easy. I mean, I, I think this PLA has gone, but there could be another problem. So here we go. Hey, look at that. It's back. It is back. And that is I can't believe that's another PLA gone. I mean, I think I've done this exact video before where I bought a Commodore 64 and the only thing wrong with it maybe was the PLA. I haven't tested this sound chip yet, but that is a good start. So yeah, I think that, that PLA, it, like all the lines were high on it and it was getting really hot. I wasn't sure how, if it was too hot to the touch because they do get quite warm, but it felt a bit too toasty. So there's something definitely going on there. Let's just see if we can do a full test on this now and see if we can get anything better. Oh, there we go. Oh, that looks terrible because it's on composite, but you get the idea. Wow, the, the video output looks awful on this. Absolutely awful. Uh, it looks like the CIAs might be working. They've got the same time on them. The RAM test has passed. Now it's gonna fail some things because I don't have the test harness plugged in, but so yeah, it'll fail cassette it will fail control port, serial port, and user port. They'll all fail. Oh yeah, and the, the SID. Oh, I should put the SID in when I do this test. So it's got a working VIC chip that looks terrible, at least on the composite, but it's working. I am not hearing any Oh! Well, we may even have a working SID chip. That, that will be amazing if that's the case. Let's give it a slightly better test and let's just load something up. Okay, keyboard's plugged back in. Oh, we've got, why have I got no, oh. I've got no keyboard. It could have, oh, that's pretty bad. Could be just a bad keyboard or it could be this could be a bad CIA chip, possibly, because those CIAs do go bad as well. Keyboard's plugged in properly. Um, let me try a game. Let's see if we've got any joystick input as well. Unfortunately, the CIAs aren't socketed, so I couldn't. I could just swap those around to find out if the CIA was bad, but they're not, so that makes it quite difficult. Yeah, it, it's like oh, actually, 
Whoa, what's happening? Oh, so K and L are working. J's working. O, P, P does work. I, U, Y, R isn't. Oh, R, oh, it actually, do you know what? I think this keyboard is working. Hmm, it might need a clean, because it seems like, yeah, two. It might just be that the keyboard's really dirty. There was a lot of dust inside the computer. So at some point I'll have to take that apart and service it. Is the spacebar working? Nope. So it could be a, just a dirty keyboard, that actually. I'm not exactly sure. I have to open it up and find out. But I could do that um, in a separate video. Let me just find out if I can get a game booted or something. So this is Batman the movie. Let's see if this works. Oh, it sounds good. The Sid sounds like it's working. Oh yeah, that sounded good. <laughs> it's Batman the movie. Hey, this Commodore 64 works, except for the keyboard, which is really super dodgy. So I might look into that in another video. I, I suspect it, it's a dirty keyboard, but it could be a bad CIA chip, because they do go, they do go bad. Oh, I'm quite impressed with that. So it's just another bad PLA 664. It's such a common fault. I mean, it's the, why, the reason why I really kind of tested it first, after testing that all the voltages were right and everything, I really just wanted to know that the PLA, the, I went for the PLA first because they're just, there's probably hardly any of them left anymore that actually work. But these Gal, Gal PLAs are really good. He falls so slowly. Oh, look at these bouncy bombs. So cool. Let's try a different game. Let me just try a different keyboard. Yeah, so this is a completely different keyboard. Let's just give this a go, and then we'll know if that other keyboard's just dirty. And it is, I think, yeah, this keyboard works fine. So that other keyboard just must be really dirty inside. Yeah, so it just needs cleaning, I bet. So I'll do that separately. But here we go, we've got a working keyboard now. Oh yeah, this is working. So I don't know of any faults on this right now. Uh, other than the keyboard that came with it is just so dirty, it, it needs cleaning. So I might just take that apart in a separate video and just get it to work. Let's have a listen to this SID, see how good this SID is before it breaks. These SIDs won't last forever. Can't believe it's got a working SID in it. Oh, that sounds awesome. This is probably how I ended the last video where I got a bad PLA, but <laughs> we did the same thing, I'd have to check it. Look at that, what an awesome game this is as well. That is another Commodore 64 back from the dead, minus the keyboard that needs a bit of servicing. But other than that, it's doing alright. So in another video, I'll just give it a bit of a clean up and I'll get that keyboard working and we'll put it back together because it's actually in really good condition this uh, Commodore 64. The board's virtually untouched apart from the work I've just done on it. It's just really dirty and the outside of the case looks really good. This has actually got a dodgy spacebar, this, this keyboard, so uh, it's probably the most perfect Commodore 64 that I've got in terms of like working condition or whatever. So that's really good. So yeah, um, that's um, Commodore 64 from eBay and I got that in I got that for £70 in June 22, and uh, it's back. It's back from the dead. Excellent.